Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here and I appreciate each and every one of you. Today we are going to look at Active Directory on our Synology. Now, for a small office, it could be very price, price prohibitive to have a Microsoft Windows server. And the Synology can actually, depending on your model, can actually act as an Active Directory server so it can save you a lot of money. Not only can it be your storage, but it can also be your Active Directory server. So let's uh, let's take a look at that real quick. Here we are. We're at our Synology where we're doing all of our testing and videos. We're going to go ahead and log in. And by the way, there has been a security update for the latest version of DSM. Make sure that your DSM is up to date. We're going to go over to Package Center. We're going to scroll down to Active Directory Server, and we are going to hit Install. And it is going to go out. It's going to fetch that package and install it for us. So we'll be right back as soon as that's done. Okay, so our Active Directory Server is installed, so we'll go ahead and open this. And that's going to open a wizard, and it's going to walk us through this. This is absolutely brilliant. So we're going to click Next. now. We got to put a domain name in, and it used to be back in the day that you would use a domain that was not an actual top-level domain. So you see a lot of things in a .dot .dom, .dot .ltd, .dot you know, not a .dot .com, a .dot .org, or whatever. Now Microsoft, um, over the last I don't even know how many years it's been, you're starting to see that the best practice is actually to use you know, the dot com internally. So, um, and I guess I don't know the history of when, when exactly that started. You know, my uh, certification on the Microsoft products is a, is a couple years old, um, but it wasn't that long ago that you could no longer get certificates, SSL certificates issued for anything that wasn't an actual top level domain. So there was there's some history there. You have to go Google search that. But anyway, so what we're going to do is our domain name here is going to be hmm we'll do h5llc.com and then it wants to know what our work group's going to be. We click that it automatically fills it down. So your work group is like your net bios name for your domain name. It's going to create an administrator account, so we're going to go ahead and uh, give this a password. Okay, and we're going to click Next. And it's going to confirm the settings with us that we selected, that our domain is going to be h5llc.com and the work group will be h5llc.com. So we'll go ahead and apply that. It's going to go ahead and create the domain. And we're going to take a look and look at everything else that it does. Now, once this is done, you're going to want to make sure that if you have static IP addressing on your workstations that you point your DNS to your uh, Synology. You're also, or if you're doing DHCP, you'll probably want to hand out the IP address of your Synology or however your DNS is set up, you have to get clients over to the Synology so that they can get the directory information. So and we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Uh, so this domain creation, it's going to speed right along here, and we'll be right back. All right, so the wizard is done, and it brings us to our main screen. And you can see here that it tells us our domain name is h5llc.com. Our domain net BIOS name is h5llc. Number of records which may need updated, um, and th those are resource records. And then it says zero, and if you do have to update them, then you do that in the DNS server. So we'll take a look at that. And then you have the option to remove the domain. So real quick, let's bring up the DNS server. So now, in so you can see that we've got the zones that were automatically created for Active Directory. And it gave, you know, gave us some zone IDs and we could actually uh, go in here and I don't suggest doing it, but you, you could come in here and add records. Unless it tells you to add a record, I would, honestly, I would just kind of leave it alone. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't go tinkering. I mean, if you want to, you know, do it, go in there, jack with it, then burn it to the ground, that's cool. But if this is going to be in production, unless they tell you to add records, or you need to add a record for something, this is going to work, and it's going to work really well, and you're not going to have to to mess with it. Um, so those are the zones that were created. Now, if we double click on that, what we can do is we can bring it up, and these are all of the special records that are created that make Active Directory run in DNS. So you can see why in production we don't want to uh, mess around with this. So now, yeah, you can add to h5llc.com if you have a device that you need. Let's say you have a Raspberry Pi that's doing whatever on the network and you need to address it by name instead of the IP, you could go ahead and come in here and add um, a record and just add your A record to do that. And that that would be fine. But don't don't go <laughs> don't go tinkering with those those default uh, records unless they tell you to. Unless this is you're building it, you want to go in, mess with it, and then blow it up and then delete it, that's awesome. But if this is production, I, I just, I really recommend leaving those records. I think I've said that about six different ways now, so I'll stop talking about that. But um, that is what it inserts into your DNS server. Now, back here at the Active Directory control panel. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Active Directory, this should look very similar to that. Then under here, any computers that are joined to the domain, they're going to show up here. And then any domain controllers that you have, will also show up here. Now, if you have another server and you join it, it should it will likely show up under computers because it's not a DC unless you use DC promo and promote that to a domain controller in your domain. You can come in here, you can add new OUs, users, groups. So under users, let's add a new user and we're going to call it WHOW and this is going to be WHOW Okay, so we've got our password set up here, and we can force the password to change it next logon. We can disallow the user to change their password. We can set it so the password never expires, or we can disable the account. Now, if you have a lot of accounts at Active Directory, and let's say you have staff turnover, my suggestion to you is to only disable the account, not delete it, uh, because you don't know where you may have not used a group. You may have attached a user to something and you delete the user and now you've got some sort of a crazy problem in Active Directory or with permissions uh, more more likely uh, on a program or folders or things like that. So disable account. What I like to do is I like to add a um, an OU that's called disabled users or disabled accounts and I like to put disabled accounts um, in that OU. Uh, you know what, when we, we never did finish my user, so we'll add a user. Go back. And we're not gonna check anything, but you could force users to uh, change their logon now. Any Active Directory groups that you need this user to be part of, this is where you would add them. So uh, domain admins, if you're an administrator, that's a fantastic group to be in. And you can see by default we are in the domain users group. Here's a recap of all of the settings, and we'll go ahead and apply that. It is now going to create H5LLC, WHOW. It's going to set all those parameters, and we're going to have a user. And we could join a machine to the domain and then log in as that user. So we could also set a share and that's probably what we'll do instead of joining my machine to the domain we'll create a share we'll put that user on there and then we'll see how we access that. Uh, the last thing that you're going to look at here is the domain policy. So there are uh, just a, a couple policies here and they are your password policy, so the maximum age, the minimum age, 
the minimum password length, so it has to be seven characters. And then what we do here is we do not allow people this enforced password history. You cannot use the last 24 passwords and then enable password uh, strength check. So that's where you have to have a special character, uppercase, lowercase number, all that good stuff. Then the account lockout policy is the lockout threshold. How many times can you get the password wrong before it locks the account? And how uh, long is the uh, lockout duration and when does that lockout counter reset so you can actually set it so that an administrator has to go in and actually um, you know reset or enable that account and I'm gonna leave that at default for now um, you can also add new groups under users it's just like adding a uh, a user except it is specific to the group so we'll add an h5 group and this is going to be h5 employees and we're not going to put an email on there now it, it can either be a domain local a global or a universal we will go ahead and go with the default global if you want to know what these mean let me know I can do um, if there's enough people interested I can do a quick Active Directory, like a 15-20 minute video that explains a lot of this stuff about Active Directory. I'm kind of making an assumption that if you're coming this far um, that you may already know some of this, but if you want to know more about Active Directory, let me know and uh, I can do some videos on that. And then is it a security group, which we use for permissions, or is it a distribution group, which we would use to, uh, you know, an email would come in to this single address and then be distributed out to other users. This is a security group. And we will apply that. But let's, uh, real quick, let's uh, reload our users. Make sure that my WHOW user is down there. Perfect. So everything seems to be running good with Active Directory. So let's go into Control Panel. Let's do Shared Folder. Let's add a shared folder called H5. This is the H5 shared folder. And we're not going to encrypt it. We're not going to do any of that stuff. Uh, you could set a quota, you know, so that only so much uh, data can be in that folder. We're going to kind of leave it wide open. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to come up and it's going to ask us about our permissions. So right now, the account that we're logged into is WHOW into the, uh, the Synology. That local user already has access. Now, I could restrict access to that folder for that user. But what we want to do is we want to pull up domain users or domain groups. I, set, I try to set permissions on groups. So real quick, let's go back over here, users and groups. We will pull up my WHOW uh, user. Now, under my user, uh, we can go to member of. And what we can do is we can find our H5 group that we created. And we will make my user a member of the H5 employees group. And we'll go ahead and say OK. We're going to touch on those options here in just a second. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to refresh this and we're going to go to the H5 group and we are going to say read write for the H5 group. We're going to go ahead and click OK on that. And so that should be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up that share. It's going to prompt me for credentials and we're going to put in my user and see if it works. So let's do that real quick. All right, so in the run line, I just put in backslash backslash 192.168.69.6. I'm going to click OK. It's going to come up and it's going to ask me for credentials. So we're going to do H5 LLC backslash W how and put in that password. And now you can see that I can get into the H5 share, but I should not be able to get into like the customer share. So uh, access is denied. My user, I did not put that group, that H5 group, does not have access to the customers folder. Should not have access to the backup folder. We should get the same thing there. It should not have access to the integ Integra folder. It should only have access to the H5 
uh, folder, which it does. So our permissions are set correctly. All right, so we're going to go back to my user real quick, and we're going to take a look at a few of these uh, user options before we wrap this up. So uh, here we have the log on hours, and we can actually come in here and tell the domain that this user can only log into the domain during these certain hours. So right now you can see everything is in blue, so it's allowed. So we could set it up so that at midnight, um, you know, my user is not allowed to log in at midnight. Don't know you I mean there's some you know when you start talking about security things can get very granular and sometimes they have to now this log on to is a fantastic feature an active directory um, and and actually uh, before active directory when we were dealing with the NT four days uh, had this too but you can make it so that users can only log in um, you know with certain computers on certain machines so that's what this is right now we've got all computers allowed we can come in here we can change the user password we can force here's all the password stuff uh, you can do smart cards you can use uh, des encryption then under general you can come in here you fill out more information about the user so active directory is a database that can be queried so you can query Active Directory for all sorts of things. So you could build an employee directory, and if you had all this information in here, it could automatically fill that directory in. Profile, if we had a login script that automatically mapped drives, or who knows, did something automatically when we logged in, you could put that here. We can automatically map the user's home directory. If you have a roaming profile, you can enter that information here. So a roaming profile allows you to have the same desktop and all the settings from computer to computer to computer. Uh, there are some caveats to setting that up, and we will eventually get into that. And then, of course, here is the member of that shows me the member of the groups that I am in. So that's it. If you don't want to spend a lot of money on Microsoft licensing, you can use your Synology. Now, you can't... Um, with the web interface do all of the types of uh, group policy objects that you can with a Windows server. But uh, eventually, if there's enough interest, we will get to a point where I will show you how to be able to apply those things um, without an actual Windows server. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you need consulting for Ubiquity Networks, Voice over IP with Grandstream, storage with Synology, security, programming, you know, web, web design, anything that uh, you want to throw at us, go to h5llc.com, fill out that contact form and somebody will get back with you. We also have a Discord channel. Charlie's our admin. He's uh, really good at what he does. You can come on in and chat. If you want to buy any of the tools and uh, gear that you see here on the channel, we do have that Amazon affiliate shop down below. As always, I want to thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you, and we'll see you in the next video.